Yeah, I pretty much don't do interviews anymore, and the only reason I consented was because I thought it was a... My big complaint is that we never talk about art in interviews. It's always talking about celebrity culture, gossip, what's it like to be on the road, crap, junk, shit, bullshit. And I piece of the game. Toller Musiker, sehr interessanter Mensch. Er liebt das Risiko und irgendwie schafft er es, das dann auch noch richtig in, die, also in ähm, positive Ergebnisse umzusetzen. Da hat er ein Gespür für. Und das ist eigentlich auch genau mein Ding. In, so, in, in dem Punkt sind wir uns extrem ähnlich. I saw the Scorpions in 1984 in Chicago, and I have all their albums, and I mean, I really am a big fan, but what makes Uli fascinating is that he walked away from a, a, a very big band and went and had this a very artistic uh, solo career, which has been very eclectic and um, very distinct and unique, and rather than fade into obscurity, his legend as a guitar player has grown, and Uli's easily one of the top, you know, five guitar players in the world. <laughs> Dann hat er mir jetzt auch ähm, letztes Jahr seine neue CD gegeben von Smashing Pumpkins und da habe ich dann gemerkt, er hat dann nochmal richtig einen drüber gelegt und das fand ich schon sehr beeindruckend. Das ist eine ganz andere Musikrichtung, war mir erstmal total fremd, aber ähm, ich habe es dann schon, ich habe es begriffen. <lacht> And why I choose is my choice What's the girl supposed to do? Morgen werden wir noch mal äh, hier in Hamburg in der Colorline Arena äh, zusammen was machen. Da hat er dann aber jetzt extra einen Song von Scorpions vorbereitet. Einen ganz alten Song, den ich auch schon seit 30 Jahren nicht mehr gespielt habe. Aber er sagt, er hat ein vollkommen neues Arrangement gemacht. Ich gehe schon davon aus, dass wir einen interessanten Abend verleben werden. Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. This is my camera crew. Uh, okay, <laughs> all right. Nice to meet you guys. But you have a coat, aren't you cold? I have a coat when we go outside. See what I mean? So, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh no. I wondered how they did it. How's your album? Did you finish yet? Uh, not finished, but uh, I'm now uh, approaching the finishing line. Mm. You know, in the beginning, yeah. In your mind, it's like endless and vast, and then yeah. you have to decide, okay, this is the final version, but yeah. there could be so many different versions. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and then you go on tour and you think, oh, I could have, you yeah. know. Exactly, and on tour, it takes on a life of its yeah. own, and sometimes you get, you know, a solution that you didn't have initially, yeah. and, and the song actually becomes better. Next month, I'll start mixing, and mm -hmm. on one hand, I like it, but on the other hand, I hate it. The, the sound that that could be out there is much better than the sound that people are getting. There's still 16-bit CDs, which is kind of well, um, now with the Stone Age. Oh, even with the iPod, there's been such a reduction in... in and and oh, the thing is, is pe people are so used to the digital, uh, the crappy digital sound that now if something doesn't have that hard edge to it, they think it sounds You've dull. gone back to analog with your album. 
doing it all really like the old way. But at one point there was a consumer market that wanted the highest level of fidelity and that market is so small that they, they don't have any power yeah, anymore. You're, you're absolutely Everything right. is driven by the commerce of how it's going to connect mm. to a cell phone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I mean I have to admit, I've, I've got uh, a new cell phone now, and it, it does play back in not an MP3 file, but another file. And I took my good headphones, and I was actually surprised it sounded pretty good. Really? You always have these strange water bottles, huh? Yeah, well, because we're trying not to drink with plastic, because everyone's getting to plastic poisoning. It's everywhere, the plastic's everywhere. We worked of an arrangement of Robot Man where we put in this thing at the end for you to solo over. So, sort of like Absolutely a. Absolutely cool. It's funny because the words are, you know, crave communication. Shut on. See me, this is my life in the crazy Robot Man reservation. <laughs> <laughs> the crazy robot man reservation. I was like, what the fuck? Uh, you these? know, <laughs> Klaus did these things. Yeah, right. You know? and, and he always used to sing communication. Crazy communication. See me, this is my life in the crazy robot man reservation. Oh, it's a painting? It almost looks Oh, it's a painting? It almost looks like a dig doesn't look like a digital. Uh, like a like a digital photograph blown up. That's yeah, my first thought. Yeah. People are starting to paint what digital images look like. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely right. You know. I mean. So they're painting what they're seeing, but it's so weird because you're thinking, why would you paint something that's mm -hmm. degraded that way? You know. Mm -hmm. But this is scary, kind of this this thing. It's like a wall of blood. <laughs> I wouldn't have it in my room. The most important thing for me is like craftsmanship. You know, I, I, if, if it doesn't have craftsmanship to start with, because craftsmanship is like the foundation, and then the art for me starts where the craftsmanship ends. Well, this is always the problem I had with um, uh, alternative music or independent music mm -hmm. was uh, poor playing being put across as part of the aesthetic. Mm -hmm. That, in essence, poor playing was, was a justification unto itself and that it would it sort of cover the sins of a good idea. That was with grunge in the beginning. Yeah. They, a lot yeah. of them couldn't play. Or well, still punk. couldn't, yeah. yeah. In fact, a lot, I mean, this is the thing with the new bands, a lot of them still can't play. They're using the computers to hide their bad playing. And that's and what set your band apart, because you had a drummer who you could really play, guitar player who could really play, and everything. You, I mean, you actually were playing. Right. Well, I, I, I was raised in a time that, where musicianship was really uh, valued, and, and because my father was a musician, he, was, he, he really hammered on me, if you can't play. Mm -hmm. his, his point to me was, if you can't play, if you think of something, you won't be able to do it. Mm -hmm. One more? I think there's one more room. This is me in 30 years. <laughs> I don't think so. Staring off into my loneliness. Oh, I like this one. It's very unusual. Look, there's a beekeeper there. Oh, he keeps the hunting, hummingbirds as bees. I love hummingbirds. We don't have them in Europe, you know, but I just, I just love it. You know, they're, they're beautiful animals. I have, a boy, I have a boy cat, you know, and one of my favorite memories of my boy cat is he was staring out the window and a hummingbird came right in front of him. You know, he was through a screen, oh, but all right. he was because he'd never seen anything like it, and it just stood there and went... And he was totally overwhelmed <laughs> by the hummingbird. You know? What's his name? Mr. Tom. Mr. Tom. Mr. Tom. Okay. Mine is called Lionheart. 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 These paintings are kind of scary, but uh, I think they're really good, you know? Because the guy says something, well, which is... really makes you think, if you want I, to think I don't want to be way. depressed anymore. <laughs> okay. I don't mean now, I mean just... In general, you know? I've seen enough horror for one life. <laughs> You've always wanted to be in a reality TV, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I was the leg of the tour, the last leg. Oh, uh, it's and been really up and down. Up and down. Yeah, uh, like, always like Our that. German tour is disaster. 
Well, just disaster. I saw you at like huge places. And yeah, empty. I mean, but nobody, empty. yeah, but nobody can do that nowadays. Nobody, you know. Yeah. Don't know why they did that. I don't know either. We did like you know twelve thousand in Paris, and we did cool. sixteen thousand in London. So we, you know, no, I can't complain really, about the, no. the the big places, but that's really good. I also feel one gets if one is like on a roll and you you play to full houses or so you get kind of accustomed to it and it spoils you. Then suddenly you have a little wake up call, you know, and it's, know, it's like really to, difficult I, I like not to, to become petulant. I like to be spoiled. Yeah, <laughs> I want to be spoiled. I wasn't spoiled okay, when I was little. Okay, I want to be spoiled okay. now. <laughs> Confession time again. Oh, God. Yeah, I want to be spoiled. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> Life's hard enough as it is, you know? <laughs> Just want to be spoiled. <laughs> All the time. All the time? Yeah, sure. Just, <laughs> you think it's good for yourself? I don't care anymore. <laughs> I'm willing to go to hell. I just want to be spoiled. touring with the um, the first pumpkins incarnation oh totally chaos the great difficulty was we were we were coming from the indie alternative world where playing great was not really stressed and on our first album the producer said look you have two people in this band who can play and two people who can't now if I try to make the album with the four people it's going to sound terrible mm -hmm. so he asked me to uh, play all the music and so he went to the other band members James and Darcy and he said look I want Billy to play all these parts because it's going to sound terrible mm -hmm. if you do and they mm -hmm. said oh that's fine we don't have a problem with that mm -hmm. and they really didn't have a problem with it until people started finding out and then that bothered them of because course. they felt yeah. publicly embarrassed by it mm -hmm. so what mm -hmm. they started doing was making it seem to people around us that I wasn't letting them play mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so this created a perception of me as being some sort of tyrant mm -hmm you know, cruel person, mm -hmm. and and I would say, well, you can't have it both ways. You can't take the money, <laughs> you know what I mean? If I'm such a bad person, then you should leave. And they say, well, no, I, I you know, I, I want to make the money, I want this, I want, and I, you know, so I'd say, well, you can't have it both ways, and I, this was the, the seeds of destruction. I don't, that, that band couldn't survive in this day and age. Mm -hmm. Because you can't you, afford that nowadays. You can't afford no. you can't afford the YouTube moment. You can't afford the car crash. You can't afford people end up being, ending up in rehab. It's just you can't do it. Mm -hmm. It's too much of a business, and it's and uh, and you know for every Amy Winehouse and everybody gets sort of fascinated by their tr troubles and travails. There's a lot of people things that go on behind the scenes that really aren't that dramatic or poetic, and end up just being more more tragic. Luckily, we never had that problem in the band, mm -hmm. and, and uh, like in Scorpions, uh, we never had any clashes over songs, who wrote what, so it was always amicable. Uh, in fact, we never even argued. We did have different opinions about music or so, but when it right. came to choosing the, the bits and pieces for the album, it was always actually very easy. Um, nobody felt like, oh, I have to push my thing, you know, right. because um, if we're going to the fight club, ah, okay. wrestling. So tell me about your wrestling. I wasn't aware of that. Somewhere along the late 90s, I became fascinated with the characters mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. this idea that these grown men go out there and, and pretend <laughs> to beat, beat each other up, you know? Uh -huh. It's a pleasure for me to have you here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank nice. you. Oh. Hast du dich schon mal sowas gesehen? Ich habe drei Jahre lang Wing Chun gemacht. Ja. Und zwar okay. ziemlich ernsthaft. Cool. Aber äh, das ist schon längere Zeit. Ich habe das schon so ein bisschen im Blut. Ja, das ist gut. Ähm, ja, das ist auch so. Cool. Tom, wann hast du die Schule? 
two years now. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Start in a little gym. So you work for Stampede then? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I worked there. Um, I have to tell Maddie it's cool. Yeah. It's great school. Great, great worker. Yeah, yeah. Um, I worked for Bruce, Bruce Hart. Ah, yeah. 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 And uh, Keith is a good friend of mine. Oh, Bruce okay. Hart, yeah. Oh, okay. Nice Fantastic. Guys. You know Rhino, Rhino Richard? Oh yeah, I know Rhino. I worked so many times with him when he was Oh really? In, yeah, he was in, 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 in Germany here. Because in Germany... Oh, he's big in Germany, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He married a German girl, I think. Yeah, but they... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who know, you know everything, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> big wrestling mark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. Ah, ah, yeah, totally. yeah, yeah, yeah. See, what, what you'd find interesting is... The guys are trained, and please correct me if I'm saying it wrong, the guys are trained to work an adaptable style so that guys who've never worked together can work together, almost like musicians who can jam. Like you have to know certain sort of structures, and then once they know the structures, then anybody can work with anybody. Yeah, exactly. So there's like do's and don'ts. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Excellent. Thank you. you want to try? No. <laughs> no. Just take a few no. bumps or something. No, no, I did, I, I, did a, I did an angle in ECW. You, probably, really? you can see it on YouTube. Well, look who it is! Billy Corgan! Well, look who it is! Billy Corgan from Smashing Pumpkins! In my opinion, your music sucks! So when you want to try, go ahead. It's a, it's a yeah, no, practice no, no. Try the ropes, so. no, 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 it's just, <laughs> it's just in one piece, it's a wanzini, it's Those, a tile out of shape. You, it, <laughs> I've run the ropes before, it, it hurts a lot more than you think. You think, oh, it's just bouncing off some rubber bands, <laughs> we, it hurts. We all know that. Yeah, yeah, we all know yeah, yeah. That. This ring is new, he's no, from I have, the States. I have well. total respect for guys who can work. Cool. Yes. Total, total respect. So, I, to me, it's not, a, it's not a game, it's not a... You have to know what you're doing. So you hurt yourself. That's the point. Yeah, yeah. that's what they. That's when people say uh, when they find out I'm a fan, they say, "Oh, it's fake." And yeah, I, I say, no. hey, "Listen, those guys take plenty of shots." Yeah, of you know, it's, exactly. it's it's not it's a lot more real than it looks. Put it that way, you know. So you all know that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, yeah. we gotta go. Are we leaving? I think oh, okay. We have to talk about wrestling all night. Hey, great to talk to you. Einer von den besten Gitarristen. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't think that would be for me. Not at all. guitar players like the, the ones I really really like to they, there's people that you listen to and you say oh he's fantastic mm -hmm. but the people I really enjoy listening to what have, do they do they, it's, they have an attack in their playing it's it's the definition attack. right it's mm -hmm. Eddie Van Halen mm -hmm. Billy Gibbons you uh, Jimmy Hendrix Eddie is great they, it's, 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 they attack the guitar in a way that, mm -hmm. that strikes me as very... A clear definition. Yeah. I, I, I mean, in my... Uh, Tony Iommi, in my child years, it struck me as aggression or violence. Mm -hmm. And I realize now, as I'm older, that's not what it's... What it's but that's how it struck me. As it's almost like a sexual, like... Da -da 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 -da
each note has a beginning, a mm -hmm. middle, and an end. And I'm always seeing everything in 3D, all, all right. the time. You know, I see the note in my mind. I can touch it, I can taste it. It's like there in 3D. And when I go into like a vibrato or so, I see that move in time ah. forward, and I'm feeling it at the same time. And I know, because I'm feeling it, I can project that into the, um, the other person's uh, right. emotions but um so i feel the exact same way compositionally yeah. mm -hmm. but not as a, i can not tell as, but when, not when as i hear a, your stuff i know that but not You're as a, a real but not writer. as a player mm -hmm. gift of being able to write a catchy song is as you know it's not that common no it's not and common. so and so at some point i had i kind of honestly i looked down my nose on you know like you were saying you look down your nose on certain things i was the same way i thought being catchy was sort of bourgeois you know like that was what the common person do, did but but i respected it in others mm -hmm. but not in myself mm -hmm. so it was something i had to make peace with but um um but live, I feel like it's much more important to be a terrorist. <laughs> you know? A terrorist. <laughs> yeah, the stage is there, stage entrance is there. Scorps have played here just after I left. <laughs> I said, yeah, right. figures. Thanks a lot. That was the only thing I really wanted to do. Right here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> guitars. Nicht die, die andere. Yeah. I remember Hendrix standing here doing Fox Lady at this spot, doing, you know this? Yeah. F, the F. Yeah, exactly like that, you yeah. know? And back then I didn't know what vibrato was like that. You know, I still remember his finger moving like that, yeah. you know, and that's where I picked it up. I saw right. this is how it's done, you know. Da, 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 yeah, it's it's totally great here. It sounds very nice in this hall. Yeah, all that wood. Fantastic player. Uh, oh, this guy's fantastic. Man, that amp gets player. loud. That is loud. My okay. goodness. <laughs> I mean, it's the music hall, you know? I know. And as soon as you started playing, I started going like this. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, this is where you heard Hendrik? Yeah. When? Uh, January 1969, to be precise. Mm. Yeah. I was like 14, just turned 14. So, he was right up there. I was right up so there. So, Hendrik's went and up and over here. Yep. Yeah. I saw him twice. I also saw his last concert in. Um, at the Isle of Fame on just a few days before he died, you know. Yeah. But that was it was unbelievable. I can 
imagine. Oh, man, you know. Imagine. So you guys are traveling around Hamburg a bit, seeing it? No, <laughs> not really. Yeah. <laughs> We're only <here> talking. <laughs> yeah, only, we drove around talking a lot, you know? Yeah, cool. Well, we, yeah. we played here tonight. Yeah. So we just kind of finished. But we didn't have this. Uh, would yeah, have been kind yeah. of well, nice, you know, actually, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes, <laughs> yeah. You should send him some of your uh, recent stuff that you've been doing. Yeah, I actually did the uh, the four seasons on guitar, did note you? for note. Yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah, and uh, with the orchestra. But I did write a. I took the liberty of writing a percussion uh, section with it, like just a timpani, back, back of it. Yeah. Timpani okay. and and everything, you know. Great. Okay, nice I'm going to run to the party. Yeah. <laughs> have a good time. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Have a nice so evening. So one day we'll try. I'd love to play something, great. you know. That'd be great. Okay, have fun, guys. Ciao. See you. Ah, isn't he flat, huh? Ah, isn't he flat, huh? My thing is, I always, I don't want that Strat sound. Oh, you don't want the Strat no. sound? Because you said you want the Strat sound. No, no, no. Oh, you want the Dimasio kind of thing? Or what? No, no, no. I don't, I don't, I don't want, I never want a Strat to sound like that. It's always been trying to get this kind of like a Sabbath sound out of a Strat. That should be difficult. It is. Oh. Let's play something fun. Let's let's, uh, let's light this place up. I uh, All right, let me think. Uh, I had such a strong feeling towards the classical and I loved the violin and the piano. This is where I always tried to find a way to bring these things together. You right. know, the classical with the rock, with the, the stuff that I learned from Jimi Hendrix. And it took me many years to find an organic way to do this. So I didn't really look left or right. What's this guitar player doing? What's this one yeah. doing? And that wasn't interesting to me because I wanted something else from the instrument. that people love something you do some time ago you know but then okay that's such a long time ago you know 
And uh, I, I want to move forward all the time. Yeah. I want to explore new. Now, I've always stuck, you know. I've always found this interesting about the public in that they they really reward you when you find something that they're excited by, and and then then they don't want you to do anything else. Oh, please, yeah. And then you say, then you it's almost like you have to prove to them that 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 wasn't just an accident. <laughs> yeah. You, know? you have to do it again and, and then again. Yeah. yeah. And, and I feel that way even now. I feel like I have to prove that the band can be big again to prove that the first time around wasn't, that wasn't, a, actually, wasn't a fluke. Yeah. with all sorts of different personalities right. and the most important thing is to know when you are being when when you have to accompany and to not do too much not to too, too little also you have to know when to take the lead yeah. otherwise it's just plain boring you know yeah. it's and good musicians can do that they it's like an ebb and flow mm. the ball it's like a ball game, mm. and some people cannot do that. Yeah, it's some shocking. people play o overplay, but with your band, there is no danger of that, um, because all of you guys are listening. You're listening to each other. In fact, even the very fact that you're standing so closely on stage that took me aback. With, with the Scorpions, that's not the case. The Scorpions stage is huge. You know, you are. I mean. Hello, Klaus, you're over there, you know, I mean, you, can, you need glasses, uh, you know, like a telescope to even see it. Right. Now, when we first started getting big, somebody came to us and said, okay, now you're big, we need to make a bigger stage. So we said, oh, okay, this means we're big, you know? So Jimmy was back 20 feet. And oh, yeah. We played terribly. Yeah. Next day we said, come back to get it back. Yeah. Yeah. There's a big difference between 60,000 people and 100,000. Yes. And you, that, yes. that extra 40,000 people can really influence the energy of the other 60,000. If you're standing in front of 100,000 people, 10,000 of those people don't even like your band. Oh, of course. There's a lot of energy. Maybe you know? even 20,000. You yeah. never know. Let's say, let's say it's 10,000. That's a lot of negative energy coming your direction. I guess you're yeah. right. Yeah. Or you know? a lot of um, uh, apathy. The apathy. Yeah. At some point, I think I just turned off my brain. I think it was important for me to start treating every stage as the same stage. Really? Yeah. I'm totally different. Yeah. I, I look at it as I like... I feed off the, the environment. Oh, I understand. And of course, you can't help but feed off the environment. But I think, I think I'm the type of personality that what's good for the one side is bad for the other. So if I really appreciate one venue, Oh, you might go into the other uh, extreme. Totally. You might then, and it might turn into a bad gig. Totally. Because you're not centering yourself on. Okay, yeah. I so get my it. way is to just ignore it. I get it. Not too high, not too low. Somewhere in the middle. Because I'm, I'm, I'm emotionally very spontaneous, and to be a performer is to ask you to not be emotionally spontaneous. You can be emotionally spontaneous within the construct of being a performer in the context of a show. Oh, but you have to channel it at one person at, at the time, and that's what you mean, yeah? I'm, if you asked me, like last night, I didn't want to go on stage. It happens. I didn't feel like it. It happens, yeah. But, but you it's have time to, to go on stage, right? Because all the people come, yeah, of and course. it would be such a letdown. Right. What I'm saying is, if you ask me my opinion, I would say, come back in two hours, maybe I'll feel like playing. 
So you learn to override your own internal system. Totally. It's a discipline. Yeah. It's a discipline. Right. Yeah. It's very, <laughs> it's very you. You know yourself quite well. Not a lot of choice. Oh yes, uh, not everybody knows things like that. No, but for me, for survival, it's been... Oh, oh, you need, you need that, you need to know yourself. Yeah. Because otherwise we become like well, a dangerous I'm, cat I'm, in the world. I'm a danger to myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you one of these people who have like two extremes in themselves? Like, you have, you have that, the black and the white, and they're, they're fighting it out? All the time. Oh boy. All the time. I'm totally not like that. Like I don't right have now, those conflicts, which is, it's very easy to be me, because I don't have that. Right. But you have it, and that must be really, really hell sometimes. Right. You know? Like the... Torment. Like one part of my brain is saying right now that I need to make this album that's something never been heard, very pushing the limits of everything. And the other part of me just wants to make an acoustic record. Because it's very simple. Like a Gemini type person. It's a very, well, Pisces, but it's a very... No, I mean, a Gemini thinks like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Pisces. Yeah, so... But, of course, uh, mu your music reflects that. You know, your music reflects that. The plus and minus. I'm so hungry. It will come, it will come. <laughs> We are water. What did you do it's wrong to get to this play. job today? <laughs> Thank you. They're torturing you. What is it? Uh, what is that? Uh, that is um, cauliflower. Oh, I love cauliflower. Um, vanilla and um, lobster. Yeah, but, I, but I can't eat lobster. Oh, no, He's a but it looks great. <laughs> don't worry. You know. Shall we get no, else? no, don't, don't worry. Let let him eat because I will have enough anyway. You know? Yeah, yeah. I don't, sorry, I don't I want to eat lobsters. I think they're really cute. You know. <laughs> What's that? Um, I don't know. Um, I will see if I can find out. What no, did I just, you I order? just can't eat cheese, so I'm just seeing if it's cheese. I can take it off. It's okay. Bon appetit. Why can't you eat cheese? I'm very sensitive to dairy. Oh, okay. Oh. Like a dairy allergy or what? I don't think it's dairy. But who knows? Are you also a person who finds it difficult to make choices because you have these two sides? Because the impression I have is that you follow your instinct or you put it all together very quickly and there's your de decision. I'm very decisive. Okay. But that makes it easy for you. Because, um, you, because I, you could also be wavering. Right. It keeps me from... It keeps me from going to... Like if I made up my mind to do an acoustic record, I do that. But sometimes it can limit my options, which can be a good thing and a bad thing. Like on my solo record, I chose to only have one guitar on each track. No overdubbing. It's all generated with drum machines and synthesizers. And then there's my voice and there's only one guitar. That's it. And I was very criticized because people were sort of shocked. I think they expected sort of like nicer pumpkins or something. Of course, yeah. I find they go a lot for the blatant things. Yeah. Shock and awe. Yeah. So in that case, I still think back sometimes thinking, was that smart to limit my choices or was that a good thing? As far as a learning tool, by limiting myself, I learned so much because it forced me to play in a way that I would never have played so, if I had 50 Right. 
but it's kind of like a weird uh the world is the world's changing at a speed that no one can assimilate it's unbelievable right no one can assimilate. so that's part so of, true part of what needs to happen i think when you when you get into an accelerated consciousness time is you need to go back to what you know you know good music always going to work uh, how you portray yourself if you're careful that should be okay it's not a time to take unnecessary risks based on a constantly moving set of parameters and we feel people have been taking risks that aren't necessary so. I don't, I don't think it's a time to be a hero, is what I'm saying. Look at these turtles. I wonder what's in his mind. Oh, look, isn't he cute? Yeah, I love them. <laughs> We're back in our... Back, back, in, our, back in our prison. <laughs> look, look. I know. They could have made it just, just a gonna little like, bit. I'm going to talk to you like this. Yeah, okay. hated that song but um uh, but when you you told me about the bootleg and when i listened to that bootleg i totally understood what you meant and and it was actually good uh, i had forgotten that we used to do um oh, like an extended see. jam oh, you know yeah. it's so long ago i mean i haven't played yeah. it for 30 years or so you know? so so what we did is we put a jam at the end i should play it on the robot guitar <laughs> What's the robot guitar the the blue um the uh, the guitar that gibson released with the power tune you know, they sold 4,000 units in an hour or so. Yeah, it's oh, the biggest guitar-selling success of all time. Of oh, Chris's thing. Yeah. It does that one the thing. The dark sound and so creamy, like a yeah. Rembrandt kind of painting. Yeah. So I played several leads with it now. On, on I gotta the hear album. that. Yeah, yeah I, it's totally different. Uh, probably people. I mean, I played it on a little gig with some friends, you know, and. Like immediately in the audience, one guy said, "Yeah, but that's not you. You can't play a Les Paul." So <laughs> why not? I mean, you know, am I, you know, free to actually have a different voice now and then? You know, I mean, people get so stuck in the rut. Nice to see you. Hi. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Nice place. Oh, thanks. Yeah, thanks. I'm going over by the fire. <laughs> it's time to chill out, Billy. Exactly. You like a drink? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Go ahead. Was he kind of a good one? Yeah. Sure, good jam. So is a tired man. Do um, you, you remind me of some Tol Tolstoy story right now? There's a picture of, on, like, on one of his story covers, yeah. I think. I feel, I feel like a Tolstoy story. Like someone on the streets of, of Moscow in the middle of the winter. <laughs> this is the Gibson one. Yeah, that's it. So is this what they were selling? Mm -hmm. That's it. They sound it. amazing, actually. And he said just, they sold out immediately. Yeah. Gone. Gone. The whole, in Toronto, the whole limited edition. In Toronto, they camped out in the front of the stores for three days. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, on the album, when I played low stuff, I yeah. played uh, Bogner. Actually. <laughs> What? I'm trying to figure that out. No, no. You just go to the seven. That's it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
No, it doesn't go like that. I know it doesn't go like that. <laughs> that's the, that's I'm the playing in my own way now. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Of course it does. But I did, I did it like that. You know, the, the beginning. Hey. I remember I did it like this, like. Oh. You know. Yeah. Oh. And then the drum. Oh. Okay. Now. So, you know, when I was doing the solo for Tarantula in the studio, I said I want to do a solo like Uli would do. And this is before I met you. So I try to imagine like a solo you would play over the songs. That's the... <laughs> Totally like Billy Corgan to me, but <laughs> never mind. <laughs> nice try, you what know. It's, it's totally it's unique. I would, I wouldn't think. See, but again, way. it's my, it's my impression it's, yeah. of the way you played. Playing, you know, solo guitar and alternative music is very pissed off. It's not the cool thing to do, or what? Right. So it's really hard to be. It's not even. It's hard even hard to be proud about it. <laughs> do you know what really? I mean? Well, because no, you're. See, when you're, you're playing to an audience that wants to hear you play like that, I'm playing to an audience that doesn't want to hear that stuff. <laughs> well, they don't want me, they don't want to hear my singing. No, they're... So, <laughs> well, <laughs> but isn't it sort of your style? But too, I mean, I no, always remember that, your that, solo style. That audience is interested in moments, and if you can play the guitar in a way that gives them moments, then it's an effective thing. But if you're just up there wanking off, they don't give a fuck. You know? This is E flat. This is E flat? Communication. You mean this is my life in the face of I'm not. I don't play. Uh, and now that. Uh, so so, what do you think we should do? E, e. flat or E? No, because e for natural. me. Okay. Grave. See, was grave communication. Oh, you sing it that low. Yeah. Me, this yeah. is my life in the crazy run. No, because I because they in order to get. Yeah. 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 Y
Crazy science fiction creation. I said, 